Today I want to talk about the basics of breeding and spawning Gardneri killifish. Don't go anywhere. I want to show you guys just what I do in the very beginning to breed my killifish. Uh, I was actually recommended these by Dan from Dan's Fishes. He's actually, you know, he's a retailer, he has a website, and he also has getgills.com where you can also purchase his fish. And uh, I did get the Gardneri killifish from him. They're P82 Gardneri killifish from the Cameroon area, from uh, Western Africa and Central Western Africa. And now these killifish are definitely a good starter killifish. You can breed and spawn these killifish in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can uh, just let the eggs mature in the water for two weeks and go ahead and let them hatch. Or you can actually preserve these eggs on peat and dry the eggs and ship them to friends and sell them and stuff like that as well. Now I prefer to go ahead and dry the eggs and peat and just let them cure for a while that way before I go ahead and hatch them. That way they all hatch at the same time. I just think it's really nice when you have a little bit more of an even hatch rate amongst the eggs. Uh, it just makes it easier to get all of the fry to grow up at the same rate as well. Now we're going handheld here just for a minute. I want to go ahead and show you just one of the male bundle of pan checked gardener eyes that I have. Uh, this is a wild caught P82 here. Uh, he's really doing very well. He's been uh, just conditioning in here alone for about six months or so. And that's how I really like it to be. Uh, I want these fish to go ahead and have some time alone just so that they can condition, let the female fill up with eggs and stuff like that. But he's literally in a two and a half gallon aquarium, no heater, no air, uh, very, very low light. But technically in the wild, that's how these fish are kept. So it's uh, in, in this place, you know, the temperature of the room makes it possible to not have a heater. Um, I do regular enough water changes, so it works out pretty well. He's really happy. He gets a nice little mixture of foods. And now in this little tank here, this is a Marineland Hex plastic tank that I got from a yard sale. I use this just for spawning. You'll see that I have the spawning mop in here ready to go. And there is a female a gardener at killifish in here. And she's also been conditioning all by herself in this tank for about two or three months alone in this tank, fattening up. She's full of eggs. She's in here somewhere. There she is. There she is. The tank is really dirty in a way and the, the plastic is also a little uh, smoky and frosted these days. But it's really just, it's a spawning tank. It's not meant to be, to, to look pretty at all. Now in this tank down here on the left, we have the other male gardener I killifish. I don't know where he's at right now, but we'll get him to come up to the front, I'm sure. These guys are always ready for food. What are you doing over there, buddy? How you doing? He's a pretty killifish. So this guy was in with the female for a little while. She really tried to beat him up pretty badly. She tried to starve him, pick off his fins and stuff like that. So he's been healing in this tank. So I want to go ahead and leave him in this tank for a little bit longer, let him heal up a little bit more and condition a little bit more. And we'll spawn the other uh, male with the female at this point. And then uh, after that, and then we'll maybe work with this guy again and put him back in with the female. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take this male killifish and put him in the other tank with the female. Pretty simple process. Just one thing to keep in mind with killifish. They are serious jumpers. They will look for any holes, any ways out of a tank. Uh, they will try and try until they find a way out and I know from personal experience So you have to keep your eye on them whenever you have the lid off even when I take off the lid a little bit to feed this guy I got to keep an eye on him So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy over in the other tank uh, without him jumping out of the aquarium either Okay, there we go. Got him. Let me get him over in the other tank All right, there we go. I got them both into this tank. Uh, like I said before, I've got the spawning mop in there. These fish are going to have to take a little bit of time to get to know each other. But they have both been conditioned properly, so they are totally ready to spawn. Now, it's really important to keep in mind that there should be some dither in the tank so that the fish have a place to go. But uh, if I zoom out here, you can see that I have a coconut in here. I have multiple plants. 
I have a large piece of uh, hardscape in there as well. And that's all just to help give the uh, fish a place to go if they have to get away from the other fish. Please keep in mind that killifish, just like betta fish and, and other species, uh, they can be pretty aggressive with each other. The males and the females can be aggressive on each other and the males can definitely uh, pretty much just kill another male. Uh, they definitely can be very territorial. So I keep all of my fish separate. Uh, just like I would betta fish unless I'm going to be breeding them because as I'm looking in this tank right now uh, This male has already had his fin split in two different places it Wasn't like that just a moment ago uh, just from flaring for this female just right now uh, He's already torn his fins. He's already beating himself up So it's kind of brutal a little bit so that to see what happens when breeding some fish, but it's just nature, it's part of the process. That's why these fish will only be together for about 12 to 24 hours before I'm gonna pull that male out, just so he doesn't get damaged too much by the female. Now remember, I will be monitoring these fish for the next few hours just to see how they treat each other. Uh, like I said before, the female is pretty aggressive and I do not want her to kill this male. Uh, so it's definitely very responsible to take a look at these guys every once in a while to see what's going on, observe the behavior, make sure that you're not just killing fish. Uh, it's definitely very important. Well, this is just one video in a series that I'm working on about killifish spawning and breeding. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I just wanted to give you guys a little glimpse into what I'm doing with my killifish and just show you my experiences getting into killifish breeding and uh, preserving the eggs and things like that. But um, like I said before, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of my subscribers out there, to all of you that like, comment, and share. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.